So we finally have a release date for Splatoon 3 and alongside we got a trailer showing gameplay of a, f of a full turf war match. Now I know I am a little late on doing this analysis thing but I did ask you guys if you wanted to see it first and um the amount of responses I got clearly shows that you guys do want to see this so here I am now. If I do miss something, you guys can just tell me in the comment section below because I don't think I'm going to get everything unless I do a second part of me going absolutely ham with analyzing a 3 minute video which some people do. But me, I'm just going to try to analyze this as much as I can in case you guys miss something. So first things, I want to start off with the specials. We did see a lot of specials in the trailer which is pretty exciting and they all look just fun to use. Starting off, we have this new vacuum special that's like from Luigi's Mansion, but you know, bro, I don't mind. If my splat charger has this as a new special, I'm not complaining. <laughs> and this has, it doesn't have Stingray, but I'll take this, honestly, bro. Like, give it to me. This new special was given its name as the Ink Vac, which is a, a vacuum that sucks up the enemy's ink whenever you use it. The more you absorb the enemy's ink, the more powerful it will be but uh, there is a limit into your bag i think once you reach the full capacity of it it i think you just shoot already but you can also shoot it without absorbing enemies ink which uh, doesn't really make sense to me but that's a thing so i guess they have both ways it could also absorb bombs which <laughs> it could literally absorb almost anything next up i want to talk about the freaking ink strike that we are getting in splatoon 3 now when i first saw this i i I kind of got excited in inside. I didn't really show it in my reaction video, but I screamed inside because Splatoon 1 vibes, bro. Like, come on. It looks like these are three little, like, I don't, I don't know if I can call them mini ink strikes, but they look a bit smaller than Splatoon 1's ink strike because that, that one was one big one. These are like three. I think you throw one and then you get to throw like three more that are like miniature but in bomb form. Wherever you throw them, that's where they're going to be landing. Now, I don't know. This doesn't have a name, so um, I guess we can just call it Ink Strike 2.0 since it's a secondary ink strike, I guess. <laughs> Alright, now that we got the new specials out of the way, let's go on to the ones we've seen so far already in like two trailers. The next special I'm going to talk about is the big bubbler now this is a, a bigger bubbler than splatoon 1's bubbler splatoon 1's bubbler was just like small it, it's the perfect size for like the inkling also the splatoon 1's bubbler uh if you touched your teammate they also got a bubbler but on this one i think it's one big bubbler where i guess more than one person can fit in it it also has a beacon attached to it which makes me think that i guess your teammates can jump to that and be safe since it's a bubbler i'm not too sure if enemies can enter it or they're just gonna be like pushed back like for the example the raymaker shield whenever you touch it it just pushes you back and you take some damage but you can also shoot the top as well to shrink the bubbler so i think that that's pretty fair yeah all right next up is the the trizuka bro this is one special that i'm looking forward to since splatoon ones <laughs> The good old days. The Trizuka looks like it shoots like three balls are like twirling around. And it's obviously a one shot. You also only get three shots of it if you know if you notice. It has like those three little container cans. I don't know what you want to call them. But every time you use a shot, it just falls out. And then it just tells you how much of it you have remaining left to shoot. It also doesn't really ink your feet a lot. You're just there as like stuck in the enemy's ink. Which I don't know if they, if they might fix that. Or that's just how the special is going to be. But I'm not really complaining. I, I like this new version of the, uh, of the Trizuka. Next up, we have the Zipcaster, Mr. Spider-Man over here. Guys, we get to be Spider-Man in Splatoon 3. How cool is that? So far, we've only seen the Octobrush of that Zipcaster, but I've noticed that whenever you use your Zipcaster to go to a different location, the charge meter, you, you it uses up a lot. Like, for example, once you choose another place to swing to, like, you use a lot of its charge and it decreases by a lot. It also decreases when you are using your weapon as well to get a kill. So, like, the Zipcaster, I'll say it will last about, like, mm, I'll say maybe seven, eight seconds, depending how you use it. I could be wrong, but that's just how I counted it. Next, we have the Crab Tank. Now, we We've seen this crab tank already in like two other trailers. So I don't know if much has changed on it, but for the crab tank, 
you it looks like you can take like normal damage on it like whenever a player shoots you so you might want to be careful whenever you use that but it also has two types of firing you can do one like full blast which does a lot of damage and ink and then one as far as like you just shoot multiple like lasers i guess i don't know what to call them it takes like three to four shots to get a kill but uh, still pretty cool also looks like when you roll you recover a, a bunch of your health so maybe that's like to make up whenever you get shot by an enemy the last special i have on this list is the killer whale 5.1 now this special is very unique to me because it is the killer whale but this one just like it speaks to me i like the way how whenever you use the killer whale 5.5.1 it like follows you around until you launch it and you choose your target i think it goes closest to whoever is around and then once you get that skill it goes to the next player who's closest to the killer whale and it looks like two little beams shoot out before you even start it and then two more after that and then another two more i i didn't really get a good look at it but that's just what i saw so when you first use it two little ones shoot first and then the other four get a chance which are much bigger next up we have the main weapon now there were uh, quite a lot of main weapons in this one trailer not counting the other trailers by the way because they have revealed so many weapons but i'm just going to be focusing on the ones that are in this trailer specifically starting off of course we have the new weapon class the bow which is now called the tri stringer which i thought they might have called it splat bow because it made pretty much sense it's a bow like ink splat bow you know <laughs> but it's called tri stringer i've also noticed that when you jump and you have your uh, bow fully charged you do like this vertical type of shot but when you're not jumping and just moving around on the ground it's a horizontal shot i've also noticed that when you fully charge it like after you shoot the shot there is these like explosives afterwards like so far i've only seen like two to three come out every time i don't know if it depends on how fully you charge it but overall, this weapon kind of acts like a sniper as well. Like, it has a lot of similar things to the sniper. Like, you charge it. It, like, sounds like the charger as well. It's I don't know if it's as strong as the charger, but we'll, we'll see once we get to play the game. Next up is the Octobrush. Now, I don't really know if the Octobrush has really changed. It looks basically the same to me. It has, like, the same speed, the same, like animation to it when you flick it i don't know what else i can say about this weapon i think it's just like the same as the other two games so moving on next up we have my beloved splat charger uh my new splat charger has this new design and um uh, i kind of like it to be honest now for the splat charger in this game it looks pretty much the same as well nothing has really changed but the only thing i did notice is that for the enemies you get to see like this like glow beam around the player as well like, I don't think Splatoon 2 had that. I might be dumb. I don't know. But uh, I've noticed it in this trailer. It looks like you can clearly see the enemy because they glow. <laughs> also, I think at some point in one of the trailers, they didn't have a laser. But in this one, they have a laser. I'm not sure if, if they were like still testing it when that trailer came out. But it looks like we're still going to have a laser to like so enemies know when you're aiming at them it would be pretty op if we didn't have those lasers because i would have given a lot of players possible heart attacks next up we have is the 52 gal now this weapon it looks it looks a bit different to me the design and the way it shoots is it just me or does the accuracy on this thing look a bit more better than splatoon 2s i don't know if that's just me but it looks like it might be a, just a little bit more easier to aim with because in splatoon 2s um i would say it was a little different to aim but uh it's it was pretty op so <laughs> they might have made it a bit more op in this game but hey it's chaos what can you what do you expect next up we have is the splatter shot pro this pretty much looks the same to me as well most of these weapons are returning weapons from the first two games so i don't really like see them changing as much they're probably just going to give them like different types of kits which most of these weapons did get some of these weapons are going to also have like some kits that were like in splatoon 1 which again gives me splatoon 1 vibes we also have the splatter shot the original splatter shot everyone loves this weapon it's just a basic weapon to use it's a pretty good weapon to keep this section short we also saw the ink brush splat brella and the splat roller which i don't think those have changed but i will mention one thing about the splat brella the brella looks like the shield of it it looks a lot bigger than splatoon 2's cause <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen those little clips Nintendo has put on their website 
of Japan. The Brella looks big. Bigger than the Inkling itself. Moving on to the sub weapons, we have quite some returning ones and then just uh, one new one, I guess. First one we have is the splash wall. I'm pretty sure these sub weapons are like gonna just be the same. Just like maybe just a different design, I'm not sure yet. We, we have the Toxic Mist as well. I don't think it was shown in this trailer at all. It, we just saw the icon on one of the players using it. We also have the original Splat Bombs, Burst Bombs, Curling Bombs, and Suction Bombs. Which not all these subs were used in this trailer. But they were used in other trailers. But Point Sensor, um, this one... It's a bit different. The icon looks like either a flashlight or a marker, which I think I think is pretty unique. I think someone pointed out that this looks like a marker since, you know, you mark enemies. You get to mark them to know where they are. <laughs> this one, you have to have like maybe good aim <laughs> just to throw it at someone so you can locate them. It does go in a straight line, but it also looks like this is this, like this beam of light in the line where maybe if an enemy crosses that line, it also locates them as well. I'm not really sure how that works because so far they only marked one enemy when you throw it at them. I don't think anyone has passed that line, but we'll see when the game fully releases. Now for some additional details. I don't know if you guys noticed during the trailer, but when you look up in the sky when someone splatted, you can see them spawning up in the air, which thank god we're spawning in the air. Because <laughs> that was a big problem in Splatoon 2 and 1 where a lot of people just spawn camped you and that just made the game not fun at all. But it looks like you can now spawn in the air instead of us spawning all on the ground. Which is weird because in some of the screenshots Nintendo has posted in the past, they did show a spawn point, but it was covered up. So maybe that represented that we will no longer be using those spawn points anymore, that instead we'll be spawning in our own espresso machines. Also, another little detail I saw is that whenever someone gets splatted, there's like this little animation to it, like it pops out more than the other two games did. Like the X like is animated when someone gets splatted, like it just comes in. Another thing I noticed is the player cards we see in the beginning of a match. It looks like we get to customize it however we want. We get to have like a title, our names, a background, and these, I guess, potential like friend code numbers we get in the game. So instead of having to add everyone on the Switch with a friend code, which please God help me, it looks like each player has their own number they can use to maybe like invite someone into a private battle and just answer that four digit code, which I think it might be, that's a little bit easier to be honest, if they did do that, which I really hope they do. Also, it looks like the game over tape or whatever it is like it has a little animation to it as well where it just it rips like it rips i don't know if the other games did that but i think it's a that's a cool little detail they have added also for the winning screen we have a new animation as well where it shows every player doing their own animation showing their cards below and then i think that's just pretty cool and i think no matter what species you are inkling or octoling i think they all do the same animation depending on what weapon you are using also at the bottom if you see you can see that we have medals we have number one overall splatter number one popular target and number one enemy splatter so looks like we, we get medals now i think that's pretty cool sense i wonder if you also get like different types of medals depending on what you do like for example like if you use your special the most in the entire game maybe that that's a medal as well and rank battle as well maybe it's like most player on the tower if you're playing tower control or most player held rainmaker something like that like i don't know how these medals are gonna work yet but i think that's a pretty cool addition nintendo has added now after they do all their poses and then they give us like this epic scene of us winning we still don't know like if there's another screen after that showing like their our results like for example how many splats we got or how many times we got splatted how many times we used our specials i don't know if they still have that after that screen but they, because they did cover it with like the artwork of splatoon 3 and when it's releasing we also don't know the losing animations yet so hopefully we get to see that soon as well yeah i sound crazy for saying i want to lose but hey i want to see it well i think i'm going to end my little analysis here because i don't want to make this video too long so i'll keep this well I, it's not short but you know I spotted everything I can, I have definitely missed some things, but that's where you guys come in. 
If I've missed something and you noticed it, please tell me down below in the comment section below. I would love to know what I missed because there's so many little details that I didn't see and Nintendo hid them very well, well, for me. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I will be making a lot of Splatoon 3 content once that drops, like expect a bunch of videos on it, especially live streams as well. Like I, I, I just, I can't wait. I'm like too hyped for it. If you are hyped too, again, make sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll see where I go from there. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys next time. Peace.